I feel like I should call this episode one of my friend Gary. Now Gary, I, I hope you see this. Yes, I have had a bit to drink. You know, I didn't drink all week. And it's Friday and I've had a little bit to drink. Now I'm on coffee. Because there was still a third of a pot of coffee up there, but... made me want to talk to you. Um, now, you could just speed it up if I'm talking too slowly. I think that's that's what I do with you. So, I mean, one, okay, it's a little bit hurtful that you... Uh, you know, that you're, you say, nobody will talk to you, but you know I would talk to you. But, I want to say you're afraid, but whatever it is, however you would characterize it. Um, I mean, you're talking to, a, want to try to talk to a science teacher, so okay, he's got education. It seems to me more about how many subscribers they've stacked up. And I think you kind of admit that. Um, because otherwise, you know, I mean, I took a lot of science courses in college, which helped me work in the sciences in my career, like 20 years out of my career, working for Berkeley Astronomy Department or observatories. And, and I understand a lot about how scientists think and really... From other people, you're going to get the same response. Other educated people in science, you're going to get the same responses from me. Uh, a little more harsh. Probably a little less subtle. A little less, you know, you know, a little less. And, um, you know, you could get the feedback on the problems with your system. And not just from me. I'm sure other people that view you, but... It's bizarre, your obsession with the idea that if you... Now, the part that's not bizarre is that, like, well, if you have a talk with Simon Dan and he'll put you on his channel, you know, then, okay, that's a marketing move, fine. Okay, I'm not saying that's not, you know, validly what it's advertised to be. I'm just saying, in general, if you really want the feedback... You know, you actually do have it. Um, of course, it's not really just about the conversation for people like yourself. It's it's about trying to propagate uh, perspective. Was that loud? Could you even hear that? So anyway, that's nice. So yeah. A couple things watching your videos that have really uh, bothered me. First of all, uh, the whole Huygens thing. Look, Huygens does not say that when a wave hits a slit, two waves are created. You must know this. That's not what it says. First of all, Huygens has nothing to do with the slit. It has to do with if you have... If you have a wave front, it could be a, st a straight wave. Maybe I put a board into the water and I push the straight wave. It'll start to curve at certain parts, but, you know, it could be pretty straight. But you could also have some weird shaped log fell into the water. And the wave starts off as a, you know, I don't know, a peanut shape. How will it propagate? Huygens is a way of mathematically approaching that that says that, well, when you have the wave front, whatever the shape, the, the way it's going to propagate is, is if you treat every point along that wave front as a little point source of, of, of a ripple. You know, when you drop a little tiny pebble in the water and a, and a ripple goes out, treat every point along that shape, whatever it is, as 
a little point source and it's next to an infinite number of ne point sources next to it, if you added up all of those, that'll tell you how the wave propagates. That, that's the idea. And it works. So when a wave hits a slit, you have to take the part of the slit where the wave is allowed through, take an infinite number of point sources, mathematically, mind you, along there, imagine that they're all propagating and interfering or whatever, you know, wave calculations, wave mathematics, and that will tell you how it propagates and in that simple case, how it starts to fan out. And, and why, basically, mathematically, why it fans out. The two sources thing is just that, look, adding up an infinite number of cases along a, a, a wavefront is a lot of cases. Infinite. That's quite a lot. So let's say you just did 10, but that's not good enough. Let's say you did 100,000 or 5,000 or whatever. You could split it up. The smaller you split it up, the more accurate your calculation would get. And if you use calculus and add them all up, it could be perfect. But the problem is that is computationally complex. Even computers have trouble doing three-dimensional propagation calculations like that. And in a slit, when you're 50 or 70 years ago and you're doing this on paper, it turns out that in a single slit diffraction, where it fans out and you have certain dark bands, where are the dark bands? Well, they're in the same places as if you had two point sources. It doesn't create two waves. The point is, you could split that wavefront into a thousand and add all those up. You could split it into a hundred and add those up. You could split it into 50 or 25 or 10 or 5. And it turns out that if you want to know where the dark bands are in a single slit, diffraction pattern, sort of internal interference in the wave, you can find out where those dark bands are based on approximation with just two out of the infinite. Just two out of the infinite, and you find out where the dark bands are. How much are the bright bands and the rest of that? No, it doesn't help you figure that out. It just doesn't. It's an approximation. And that's pretty amazing, actually, that <clears throat> you have an idea where if you split it up into an infinite number of source points, you can calculate the exact propagation, but you actually get good aspects of your approximation with just two. Right? So that's actually quite interesting. But, you know, on the other hand, it, it doesn't prove anything in itself, except to say that it's Huygens is about wave propagation. When the wave hits a slit and part of the wave is cut off, it continues to talk about wave propagation. Why does the little tiny segment that makes it through a slit, why does it start to fan out? It explains a mathematical calculation that matches that fanning out. That's that's the point of that. And this is really similar to me to another big problem with your system, which is not that you have your own system, that's fine. But it's the fact that your system relies at this point on scientists just lying. Like, a hundred years of experimentation, we didn't really do it. We say we did it. We tell the college students like Piero, you know, that we did it. If he was a grad student, then we tell him how we fake it. I mean, how is this 
conspiracy possibly supposed to co-heed thousands of people that it would have to be in on it. It makes no sense. If, you're, if your scientific system relies on that, we don't even have to consider it. That's why you can't find anybody besides me that likes you and wants to be your friend that's willing to talk about it. Anyway, cheers.